Well, glory to God, today is super saturated Saturday, yes. Oh, what a day to be alive. I am ecstatic to be with you on Daily Victory. I want you to get on the phone, get on your text, get them in communication with everybody that you know and tell them, Pastor Gary's back. He's on Daily Victory. He's on Daily Victory. He's here. Oh, I know it's been months for many of you that you've seen me, but I want you to know you're going to see more and more and more and more until all of a sudden you're just engulfed with the great grace of God that God has placed on my life and mainly on this word of God because it's not so much the anointed vessel that God uses, it's that his word is anointed no matter what vessel he uses. He can even use a donkey. Well, don't go calling me no donkey. All right, now, Let's get on into the Word of God, because we're going to have an awesome time with this super saturated Saturday as we step into understanding the law of the ordinance of God of his tithing. You say, tithing? Oh, I don't believe in it. I don't. I tried that once or twice, maybe three times. I Or... I absolutely know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I would never end a year with ever seeing less than 10% of my gross revenue in the kingdom of God. There are one of three people that I'm talking to today, those who have not yet stepped in and engaged God, those who are in doubt because they tried and didn't experience, and those that have committed and are walking in a covenant with God in fulfilling his spiritual ordinance of tithing. Let's take a look in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Listen carefully to the revelation of Jesus and his designed return. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger. He shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, did Jesus suddenly come into his temple at his birth through Mary? No. But when he suddenly comes into his temple in his second coming, it is going to be the heaven split. He comes on the white charger with a host of heaven. And therein becomes the manifestation where the church gets caught up to be together with the Lord. Now, as this event unfolds and the word of God is being declared, it says that who may abide, in verse 2, in the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears, for he shall be like a refiner's fire like fuller soap. Now, what is a refiner's fire? When a refiner's fire takes gold, silver, any molten metal, and it raises it to its temperature degree, and it brings about all the impurities to the top, and then it takes all the dross, all of the impurities, and they, they scrape it off, it becomes then purer than it was before. So as Jesus is coming into this time of his return, as we are in the last days, and you and I both know that we are in the last days, we know they began the day Jesus was brought forth in this earth, the beginning of the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. But now you might say, but that's a long time to be in the last days. Well, how many days were in the former days? I mean, some are talking about billions of years. I don't know, but I do know we are in the last days. There's no question, no doubt about it. And there is a fire burning. He is coming into his temple. Where's his temple? It's us. He's coming to manifest himself in us, to reveal himself in us, to unfold himself in us, to manifest the revealing of the nature of himself like fuller soap. What does it do? It purifies. It takes out every impurity in the fiber and fabric of that which had been stained. Then he goes on and it says, why is he going to purge them like silver and gold? 
that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Listen to carefully to verse 3 again. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purify them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So there's something that God wants from us that is being purified because of him, because his presence is in us, he is a refiner's fire. He is a fuller soap. He is refining us as sons of Levi, the priesthood, because we're all priests and kings under our God. And what is he wanting from us? An offering. You say, but what's an offering? First, presenting my body, a living sacrifice. The first offering that God wants is not something from me. He wants me, all of me. He wants a radical abandonment, a supernatural subjection. He wants the a life of him substituting the life that I would live so that I live not my life, but his life. An offering, I present my body, a living sacrifice, my reasonable service of worship. So now I reckon that I'm presented before the Lord as an offering unto the Lord. But then he also wants what I have. He first wants me. Then he wants that which I have. He wants all that concerns me. Well, he wants my family. He wants me to commit my family into God's hands. He will not permit my family to be higher than he is. He will not permit me to have my wife or my children have a higher precedent nor authority than he is in my life. I found early in my walk when I had just been spirit-filled, Faye and I got remarried again to each other, where God revealed to me that he would not accept having my wife between God and me, that she had to be presented just like me, a sacrifice. I had to sacrifice my wife so that God be true and my wife subject to that truth. I had to be offered as an offering unto the Lord. So me, my house, and now we come to the financial affairs of life. It says, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. And I will come near to you in judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against the false swearers, against those that have pressed the hireling in his wages, against the widow, against the fatherless, and turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. So something has happened in this ordinance. It says, this ordinance, I haven't changed. From the days of your fathers, you've gone away from my ordinance. What's an ordinance? It's a standard of truth whereby I have set both blessing and cursing. Well, we know that Jesus bore the curse of the law. He didn't bear the blessing of the law. <laughs> I think it's wild. You know, here comes Jesus. He's hanging on the cross of Calvary and he becomes sin. He becomes the curse of the law. He doesn't take away the blessing that is under the covenant of God's word. He invokes every good and every perfect will of God in your life. As Jesus, the righteous, bears all the unrighteousness of humanity, as he bears all the sin, he hasn't changed. He's now looking for, he's still looking for you. He still wants you. He wants you a sacrifice. He wants you to honor him. He wants to be first in your life. And he wants everything that you think is a priority. And therein 
becomes your finances. So we go on and we look. Now remember what's going to happen because he is going to be a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. He's going to bring about a supernatural intervention in your life that's going to shift everything to the dynamic of God's blessing in your life. Then he goes on and talks about robbery. Will a man rob me? And some people then threaten the church and say, well, you're going to be cursed and damned if you don't give God your tithe. Now, Jesus became cursed. Get all that off your mind. All of that is off the table. You do not pay the price of your sin. Jesus paid the price of your sin. So what we're talking about is that which is the blessing of God, that which is the invoking of the ordinance of God of increase and blessing and rebuking of everything that would devour in your life. Then he goes on and he says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Why prove me? Because he desires you to see he's a good God. He desires you to see that he has blessing and increase and joy and strength and power, and wisdom, and overwhelming. Oh, my Father, do you know how awesome your God is to you? That he gives you something on this earth to do. There's only a few things you can do on the earth. You can pray. You can say. You can obey. And you can give. <laughs> do you know that's it? You can pray. You can say, you can obey, and you can give. There's only a few things on earth you can do to invoke and engage God in his supernatural dimension in your life. By proclamation, you're saved. When you declare Jesus Christ is Lord, and when you speak to this mountain, be thou removed. So what do you do? You say, whenever you pray in the name of Jesus, you demand do those things that belong to you. You can obey. You take the word of God and act on it. And you get the results of an action. And you can give. This dimension of giving is opening up to you a proving realm of a covenant dimension of God in your life. And I charge you and challenge you today to take action and watch God be God in your life. He says that he will now rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine, cast, your vine cast her fruit before its time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And then it says, your words have been stout against me. But you said, what have we said against you? You said, what benefit is it that we've kept his ordinance? What do we get when we do what God says? Oh, whatever you do, don't ever take an action and abort your action with your words. Remember the four things I shared with you? You can pray, you can say, you can obey, and you can give. Whatever you do. Do not abort your giving with your words. Make your words in line with the word of God and speak. My hands are blessed. Whatever I put my hand to is blessed. Whatever I do is blessed. Put your life in course of action. Take action today and don't abort what God has given to you because he is coming. The king is coming. Maranatha, Lord, come now, save now, return now. And Jesus the righteous is coming with on his thigh, it's written, the word of God. He's coming and he's coming for you. Will he find purity? Will he find a house swept clean? Will he find a pure offering? Will he find you with his life in you? 
Will he find faith on the earth? Well, I pray so. Father, today, on this awesome day, I give you thanks for the privilege of bringing your truth of the last book of the old covenant as we transit into the new dimension of the New Testament. Jesus, you fulfilled the law, and now we likewise can walk in it freely. We bless your children, Father. We bless our seed. We bless our increase. Now today, my friend, today I want you to sow. I want you to give. I want you to pray. I want you to say. I want you to obey and give. And when you do, know that your God is right here, right now, receiving. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next time. I can't wait to see you again on Daily Victory. Make sure you get on the phone and call us here in America at 302-561-6767. That's 302-561-6767. Call us in Canada, 709-500-6767. Call us in Canada, 709-500-6767. Maybe you have some questions you need to get cleared up about what you pray what you say, what you obey, and what you give. God bless you. Love you. Hi, I'm Pastor Laurie Itahosa. It's great to see you today, and I'm excited to tell you about what's happening on January 20th. I want you to get out your calendar, get out your phone, wherever you save important dates, and I want you to put down January 20th. On January 20th, I'm going to be leading the New Beginnings Breakfast this year. And I need you to come support me, okay? My dad has done this for the last 40 years. It has always been Pastor Gary Whetstone's New Beginnings Breakfast. And he's entrusting me to lead the New Beginnings Breakfast. I'm kind of excited about it because for me, that's a big sign of trust coming from our founding pastor. And not just that, but God has put a word in my spirit that I believe is going to transform your life. This is our year that we're running with the vision. And we're going to be talking very clearly and specifically about how to run with the vision in different areas of your life. We're going to be taking some very detailed time and and working our understanding of vision, working our understanding of dreams and of goals and of direction and of focus. And I'm excited about sharing this season with you because I believe that January 20th is going to change your life. I believe that January 20th is going to set you on a trajectory where you are not going to fail in the things that God has called you to do. So listen up. We're going to be there January 20th, 8 o'clock starts our breakfast, and then 9 o'clock starts the meeting proper. Now, we're probably going to start praise and worship sometime around 845. So come on out at 8 o'clock, fellowship with us, have some free food. But then by 9 o'clock, we're going to get deep into the word of God, and it is going to be life transforming. So be with us. Be with me on January 20th. And I encourage you that this year's New Beginnings Breakfast is for you. It's for your children. It's for your teenagers. It's for your family. It's going to be relatable. It's going to be understandable. And it's going to be something where you can easily implement what we're teaching into your daily life. So we'll see you on January 20th. Mark that in your calendar, eight o'clock, and I will see you there. God bless you. I love you.